بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله I was traveling recently I was in Virginia and on my way back I read a, a book by Ibn al-Qayyim it's called Iddat al-Sabirin and it had some very beautiful things about sabr and things but also about ghafla and shahwa and things like this and that's why I spoke about in the khutbah today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told us in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد درأنا لجهنم كثيرا من الجن والإنس Verily, we have designated for the hellfire jahannam كثير a lot min al jinn from the jinn and ins. This is in Surah Al Araf in the 179th ayah, I believe. When you read just this part of the ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing us, is telling us, is informing us for sure. There are many from the jinn and ins, insan like us, that will be going to Jahannam. If that part of the ayah doesn't raise hair on your body, it doesn't put you in a state where your heart starts to tremble, where your heartbeat goes up, where you awaken from the sleep of daily life if j just that part doesn't something is wrong something is terribly wrong if you read this ayah whether you're reading it because you're doing khatam like you know people have this thing like in three days you want to finish the quran every seven days or whatever mashallah but a lot of people when they are going through this they're not thinking about those ayat if you're going through this ayah and you just kind of cursory read over it and you don't stop and think, Wallahi, yani, we need to go back to the Quran, tadabburan. When I read this, I wasn't prepared for it. And it took me. So I wanted to see who are these people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah explains their sifat, who are they? Taqala subhanahu wa ta'ala, lahum qulub, they have hearts. Tayyib? La yafqahoon biha. Lahum qulub, that they have hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say lahum dumugh or dimagh. Dimagh being singular, dumugh being jama'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say they have brains, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they have hearts, but they don't understand with them. It's interesting. We think today, like when we study anatomy and biology, and we think with our brain. And that's true. I mean, we do. I mean, senses, senses eyes, ears, send messages to the brain, the brain makes decisions, sends you know, messages back to the different nerves and muscles to react. But that's not what's being discussed here. Even a kafir, even a mushrik, even a mubtadi, even a person who's going to go to Jahannam will have that senses and that ability. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that they have hearts, but they don't comprehend with them. Because there is a decision making in the brain and there is a decision making in the heart. One is a very physical, you can test it in an anatomy course, lab, whatever. And one is a very spiritual thing. Islamically, when you go to the Quran, you will find very few references to the decisions of the dimagh, yani of the brain. But you will repeatedly find about the qulub, the hearts. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them that they have hearts, 
but they don't understand or comprehend fiqh with their hearts. Lahum ayun, they have eyes. La yabsuruna biha. They have eyes, but they don't see with them. Tayyib, if you look at a kafir, does he not see? Like, if there is a door, does he not see a door? Of course he sees a door. If the sun is rising, does he not see the sunrise? Yes, he sees the sunrise. But what does he not see? Is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that sunrise. When you see a child that is born, a kafir sees it as well. But what does he not see is the miracle of birth. And who is the one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that designed that child, that ordered that birth, that made that system. When the kafir sees the miracle of the adaptation of creation to their environment. I'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of a mosquito. But those of you who have studied yani, in colleges and things, universities or whatever, about the mosquito. The mosquito comes and sits, but it has special fibers, whatever, on its feet, that you don't feel it. Otherwise, like if some other bug crawls on you, you feel it immediately, it's dead. So it sits, but it sits with such technology that you don't feel it. Then the female mosquito needs your blood, right? For fertilization, give nutrition to its egg. So what does it do? The mosquito, it injects First, not, not its yani, injecting tube thing, you know. First, it numbs it. It injects a spray, a liquid, and correct me from the brothers who know more than me on this, to numb temporarily the area where it's going to inject you. So when it stings you and takes out the blood, it doesn't actually, you don't feel it at that time. Otherwise, right, when it bit you or stung you, you would feel it, immediately you would kill it. No, it takes that blood. Then, when it's gone and the effect goes away, then you feel that itch. And then you're looking around, who bit me? So a kafir sees this as well. This whole system, this whole process. But what does the kafir not see? Is who designed that. What does his heart not comprehend is who developed that. How could that be with just a series of, of, of accidents? How could that be at random? How could that be without a creator, without a developer? This is the kafir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, وَلَهُمْ أَذَانٌ يعني They have ears, لا يسمعون بها. But they don't hear with it. In this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled the hujjah on insan for the haqq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salam to this dunya. And if we only had our basic intellect, fitra, intelligence, it would have been enough for us to realize that there is a creator. And there is only one creator. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Anbiya, the first messenger, Rasul, after Adam al being Nuh alayhi salam, and then continuously one after the other. All the way when we go into Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Yaqub alayhi salam, and Ishaq alayhi salam, and Yusuf alayhi salam, and Musa alayhi salam, and Dawud alayhi salam, one after the other. And they spoke to their nations, and they showed them miracles. And everybody physically heard them. But only the ones who had that love for guidance in their heart listened to them. Everybody heard them, but only those with that love for guidance, a pure heart, 
listen to them. Everybody had ears. But who listened? And this continued until the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this ummah to take this message all over the world. And everybody today, wallahu alam, I don't see anybody on the face of the earth that has not heard of Islam. Even if you, they may not know Islam well, but they've heard of Islam. But how many people have listened to the message? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those people, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ they are like cattle, بَلْ هُمْ Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are like cattle, not even bahaim, but cattle. But worse. They are worse than cattle. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Verily, they are the ones who are heedless. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from the ghafilun. Even though alhamdulillah we're sitting in a masjid, even though alhamdulillah we are people of tawheed, even though alhamdulillah we are Muslim, even though alhamdulillah we read the Quran, we, we hear the, the, the dua talk about yani, ilm and sit in halaqat, but never become complacent with that. What is the opposite of being ghafil? Being a zakir. The opposite of ghafla is dhikr. We should always stay in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't mean like some people, they have the little uh, tasbih or you know, little prayer beads in their hand and the whole day they're crap, crap, crap and they're not thinking about it. They're talking to you about stuff and they're still moving it and they're cursing, they're using foul language and they're still moving and I don't know what they're counting. Maybe they're bad deeds, I don't know. But that's not what I mean. I mean somebody whose heart is attentive to the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see a mountain, the first thing you should think is subhanallah, subhan al-khaliq. When you see a lake, when you see ice, when you see snow, when you see when your professor in your university or your college tells you something amazing about the human body, the first thing that should come to your mind is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in being in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are going from place to place or you have time, make tasbihat. Yani subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha Allah akbar. These are well known, subhanallah, bihamdihi, subhanallah, adim. These are well known, their fadail are well known. So keep this dhikr. Whenever you can, read the Quran, read the Fasir, read books of hadith, read books of fiqh. Whenever you can, sit in the halaqat of ilm. All of these are ways of not being ghafil. Anytime you're sitting with each other, bring up a subject of akhirah. Bring up the subject of deen. Ask a question. If you know somebody who knows, ask them a question. If you know, teach somebody. If nothing else, just talk about things that benefit. And this is the opposite of ghafla. May Allah not make us from ghafilun. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of dhikr. Wa jazakumullahu khairan.